heading over to the mainland. Uh, Stan wants me to look at something to get some information for him. So as we turn left here, we're going on to Causeway. I guess we call it Causeway. What do you guys call it here, Stan? Causeway. Yeah, Causeway. So this is a man-made thing because this used to be an island, right? Yes. Yeah. So this Causeway we're going on is uh, oh, maybe three quarters of a kilometer long. So if you were going to drive in and out on the winter road, this is the route you would take. Now you're on the mainland and you could drive south. So there's the culverts there. Uh, are we going to use a tow line? Hook it up underneath there? We'll go this way. So you guys shoveled a path real quick. Yeah. Is it your vehicle? This is just like your work? You're doing it for help to... Oh, this is mine. Oh. Yeah. So somebody borrowed your vehicle and got stuck out here. No, or were I you... I slid last night. Oh, this was you. You're the one that slid. Don't you know your way around the community? <laughs> <laughs> How did you manage to do that? <laughs> We're gonna hook it up, pull it this way. Uh, I'm going to start my own gas business too. It's for the uh, transporting the uh, uh, gas from the airport when the uh, freight train comes in and uh, they just pump it in, in the tanks and I just go to my place and uh, that's where I'll be selling gas from my place. It's just transporting the fuel from the airport to my place and mm. that's, yeah. So those will be about 4,000 pounds each full of gasoline. Okay, 4,000 If you put fuel in them, they'd be a little heavier. Fuel, okay. fuel oil's heavier? Yeah. So it's uh, 2,200, 2,250 liters, uh -huh. 1.6 pounds per liter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Puts it at about 3,600 pounds and about 400 for the tank, so 4,000. So you should get a 10,000 pound trailer. Okay. Because that way you won't break it. Which one I'm going to need? Well, the small one will carry the weight that you need. Uh-huh. 10,000 pounds? Yeah, because you're going to have 8,000 pounds with fuel and tank. Oh, okay. Two fuel and two tanks. Okay. Because 8,000. So 10,000 gives you a little bit of room so it doesn't break. You know, you're not right at the maximum, right? Uh-huh. Okay. I told them I'll give them a call Monday. Yeah. So 10,000 pounds, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can also pipe that stand so that it will, you can pull out of both tanks at once. Oh. So they both go down okay. together. Okay. You just, you come out and, and join them together and then yeah. put the pump on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. When are you going to be at the office? Well, I'll come right away before it gets busy. Okay. You got to transport those wagons to, to 
they're not made for highway, you know, you can't pull them down the highway. No, I, got a, I have a trailer that if, if I could get them right away, like uh, I got the uh, 14 foot trailer, I got to pick up. The, Stack them on there. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. Yep. If they get them on time when I go pick up my trailer. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me know too, because that way if, if I'm going to the city or something, I can always pull it. Pull yeah. everything back to Sulu Goat at least. Oh, okay. Right? All right. Then you wouldn't have, that, have to go so far. Mm -hmm. Stay in touch on that. Okay. okay. Deputy chief. Yep. You own a hotel. Yes. A convenience store. Yes. Put on fish fries. Yep. You're trying to get together a situation where you can have more gas into the community for people. Yes. What what possesses you to take on so many different undertakings? And uh, you know what is what is it What's uh, driving you? Uh, when I uh, built my house, it's. Uh, I did on my own. It's not a ban, ban uh, housing. It's a, uh, it's a. I wanted to have a new house. There's so many people that wants. There's over 100 people that on the list to get a new house, but we can, we can only do so much, like three, four houses a year. That's all we could do. The funding. The funding we get from the INAC, Indian Affairs, and and I had to do save up some money, and I built my own house where you were this morning, and uh, it's uh, I save up some money. I did the foundation and the shell. And I went to see the bank, CIBC and Solacout, and I wanted to do a next phase. I need some funds to do phase by phase every year. But bank told me, just go for a bank mortgage. And I, I, I uh, how can I do that? It's on a reserve. <laughs> yeah. There's no security. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Right. You you could do it. There's a way to do it. He says this. The manager said the bank manager. And uh, what happened? Okay, I'll give it a try. And I told uh, I'll give it a try. And uh, said just fill up the applications. What you need to do. There's a process. What you need to do. And so I did. And somebody helped me from Efna. Efna 
and the, uh, uh, the housing co coordinator from EFNA. And uh, he helped me out step by step in what to do and the bank need a uh, lot of information from me and from the band. My uh, personal, like, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the credit I have mm -hmm. for the CIBC, I had a good credit and, uh, right. and uh, they wanted me to put down 15% uh, out of that the overall how much I'm going to spend on that house right. to get a mortgage and uh, they needed a PCR from the band I see. and uh, the band made a PCR for me if there's any default payment from me the band will pay will cover but that's not happening yet. It's been uh, it's been over ten years, and it was a 19-year mortgage, and uh, more than halfway done already. Well, more than halfway done, and it's the first one north of Solaka to somebody to have a mortgage on the reserve, and after that, it's ten years now, nobody has done it yet. The other, I have the, all the information. I told people I have the information. I can help you out what what to do if you wanna have a bank mortgage and nobody wants to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What happened was after I finished my house that time, mm -hmm. everything like, um, uh, after it was approved, I went through a lot of things to, to get approved, eh, what the bank wanted to, like uh, look at my credit history, when my application went to Toronto, Vancouver, back and forth, the head office in CIBC, and uh, finally eight months, it took me eight months to get a probe. The information, what they need, uh, took so long, because it's the first one in, uh, on a reserve north of Solokot, the very first one, yeah. And it went to INAC and Thunder Bay, and then went to the region too, that uh, Ottawa, for ministerial guarantee, they call it. <laughs> so after it went smoothly after that, and um, I got approved and after eight months, everything was approved. And I had a mortgage, bank mortgage, insurance, I pay insurance, house insurance, everything I pay, everything what you pay out there. <laughs> Treated the same way. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and uh, after I finished my house, and uh, it was a contractor that came here that my brother-in-law was working there that time as an airport manager. They needed a place to stay, so I, when I finished my house, they all oh, put him in my new house, and uh, they can stay there for three months. They did. After. After they left, uh, after they left, and uh, that's when the phone started ringing. People wanted to stay here at my house, and uh, that's where I started my business. Just like that. <laughs> and uh, I had to build another one. I couldn't keep up. And now I can't keep up sometimes. And this one, I got to extend it too. And I had to build my convenience store too. And I have to expand, ex do an extension uh, this summer. And the uh, gas business, I'm going to start that too, this summer. And it's just, it's just growing and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, and uh, I got re-elected to on council. I've been on council for 16 years now altogether, and uh, be another two years will be 18 years altogether on council. So I've been really busy <laughs> running my business and be on ca council too. Yeah.
know what they did with the bottom. I thought it was going to yank the underneath or something like. Excellent. Third time's the charm. This place here, this building, was was built by the construction guys who were building in the community. Yeah. And once they finished their contracts, then they sold it to you guys. Yeah. I see. They were just trailers, five trailers. They just put them together. Oh. Ah. Yeah. I've uh, worked with the uh, KI uh, band for roughly about. Uh, um, going on uh, eight years. Mm -hmm. I came in blind, um, but I had some backgrounds where I did uh, various jobs uh, over the years, uh, trying to experience uh, different uh, different uh, jobs where I can gain knowledge. Uh, for instance. Uh, even though I didn't go go to school for this, I've uh, learned how to do uh, electrical work, uh, wiring up a house, roughings, and plumbing as well. I've uh, learned to teach myself how to do plumbing just by looking at uh, how it, how a basic house is set up. Um, I've learned how to drive uh, heavy machinery. Um, I like to analyze stuff 
before I start. So those are things. Uh, I've done uh, housing for two years just to know the concept of uh, blueprints and construction and how the, the logistics of uh, constructing a, a house. Looking back to those, I guess it kind of paved an avenue for myself to go back to my community and take on this role mm -hmm. of uh, on I'm in care public works manager mm -hmm. for KI because mm -hmm. uh, with this job you have to improvise and think ahead and think out of the box always because nothing is read, readily available for the community so I have to solve uh, issues that arise mm -hmm. and it's not like running into a, uh, a hardware store and grabbing this and that. You have to mm -hmm. improvise in order for it to work. Mm -hmm. If we can't get everything in, it will prohibit the, the school being built. Like it, it will be one year, one year uh, delay till next year. But even that, we're not guaranteed. So. If it's warm this year, can't do everything, then next year if it's warm, we can't do anything. So the more it is, the more delayed it gets for the school project. Because yeah. there's lots of, lots of, I think, stuff that won't fit in the plane. Yeah. Have you noticed the change in climate or is it just, the, is it up and down? Have you, over the years of living here, has, is this normal for you or is it, is this unusual? Um, for the last maybe I'd say eight to ten years it's been like this like uh, the weather has changed so much and uh, it's kind of like a challenge sometimes to try and build the road and then uh, you there were a couple of times that we, we couldn't use it only just small trucks but not the freighting there was, I don't know, once or twice that happened. So even if we make it, it's not guaranteed. So uh, with the winter road portion of it, the funding format doesn't identify equipment purchase. So they just give you a, a number to work with, funding, uh, funding for the winter road. And it is up to the First Nation to try and get these equipment on their own, where there's no um, revenue, that much revenue that comes into the community. So we have to find ways and improvise on how we can get these equipment into the community. We're going to be installing a new water line because most of the wa water line is now installed on the, across the lake. So this is where our, our main water line is going to be. We've he heard the elders about the change from when they were when they were like our age compared to now. There has been a lot of change. They say, like uh, before, it was really cold, and uh, there were certain things that they could do. Nowadays, if you try to do the same thing, it's it's a little different because it's kind of warm and uh, some sometimes some lakes don't freeze early and like uh, early fall and stuff they what like the way they used to do it I remember one time that I was skating on October 3rd one here for the past many years ever since I was the kid it's, uh, I we could never do that because the ice Sometimes, even like uh, early October, there's still the lake. October wow. third one. On Halloween, you could yeah. be. I could be skating on the ice October third one, but ever since then, it has ever happened again. It's been a struggle with Winter Road because uh, we have this short window, and uh, especially this year, it was hard. The conditions were different. The, so the snow was different this year. It didn't pack well as 
the previous years and we didn't get that much ice this year uh, with usually mother nature would help us because we have two crossings two major crossings that uh, we connect to kingfisher which is a neighboring community roughly about 124 kilometers from here so that's the <coughs> winter road that we usually do and uh, we have to get at least about 34 to 36 inches of ice and this year we only got uh, on the main channel we only got 17 inches of ice so it was a little bit more expensive this year in hiring um, local labor to flood the crossings mm -hmm. and uh, this year we're hauling um, I believe we're hauling uh, four school projects on this uh, corridor which is the Ashwood corridor um, one man lake first nation is getting a uh, school along with Casablanca First Nation and Wibka First Nation and there's us Kitchener Mix and uh, there's going to be two phases on our side uh, regarding the school project first uh, we're going to work on the shell portion of the structure which is I believe is uh, roughly about 4,000 plus square meters uh, of our school the current school, I, I don't know if you visit the current school, it's going to be two times the size of that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a big structure and it's going from uh, K4 to grade 12. Although there has been workshops uh -huh. that come and tell us that we should plan for uh, the global warming, climate change, and that uh, these things will occur like uh, one person said, uh, when they came here that when it rains it's not just gonna rain a little bit it's just gonna pour just all of a sudden and that's been happening I've noticed that ever since that workshop was last year and I've seen that and sometimes it even rains during the fall when there's snow. Chief and I in our previous councils have been fighting uh, trying to uh, address the overcrowding of classrooms the classrooms are roughly about uh, 24 by 21 uh, meters, um, I mean feet per classroom. And it goes from uh, roughly about 30 to 36 kids per classroom. And if you look at that, uh, that, uh, that space for a classroom with that number of uh, kids, and if you look at the, the desks and equipment are there, there's little space for uh, all the kids to fit in there. 